Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Keenagers uh, virtual edition. I just have a, a. We're going to spend some time praying this morning for our country, but first I thought I would read a, a, an article that was written by a good friend of mine, and he publishes these in a local newspaper. And he titled this one Corona Crisis. The stock markets are way down, whole countries are off limits, and people are advised to practice social distancing. Those who have flu-like systems are encouraged to self-quarantine at home to protect themselves and others from possible serious illness and even death by the coronavirus. I'm thankful that we have a healthcare system that can warn us of these dangers and in time hopefully come up with immunization to protect us from future ravages of coronatype viruses. Though not as obvious to some, there is a much graver danger which eternally affects every one of us human beings, and that is sin, our inherent rebellion against God in thought, speech, and deed that brings eternal spiritual death to each of us if not dealt with. Though we are all warned to keep from sin, it has already infected each of us. For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Paul wrote that in Romans chapter 3. The scriptures warn us of the consequences of this rebellion against God. For the wages of sin is death. Again from Romans chapter 6. This death is an eternal separation from God forever. God created us to have fellowship a living and active life of obedience with him. But we have all turned against him and chosen to go our own way instead of his way. Sin has separated us from him and put the death sentence on each of us. The sentence is grim, but there is hope. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. That's from the book of Timothy. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord, in Romans chapter 6. And a gift is not ours until it has been received. Amen? I know that's... Uh, Preaching maybe to the choir, as they say, but, uh, you know, that's, I just see this uh, crisis that we're facing right now as a time when we need to be praying for the salvation of our uh, countrymen. So many, uh, you know, it's, we're in a minority in Canada, believers, and so many uh, of our countrymen are, don't believe and don't even care. And I just think that this is a time when we should focus on asking God for an awakening in our land and a revival in our church. So could we just uh, bow our heads right now and uh, take that to the Lord, knowing that he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of him. So Father, we just counted a privilege to be able to meet this morning, even virtually and in, each, in our homes, and uh, thank you for the technology that allows us to do that. And Father, we're in the midst of uh, uh, this pandemic, and uh, it's a crisis that our country, uh, no one alive has ever faced before, a worldwide pandemic. And um, Lord, it's, uh, it can be a fearful time, it can be a challenging time, but Lord, I just pray that you will use this crisis to awaken people to the fact that you exist and that you are in control of all things, that you are sovereign, the sovereign God of the universe. And Lord, I pray that this crisis will make people think of their own mortality. We all know from a very young age that life is, is finite that one day we will leave this world. But very few of us spend much time 
during our lifetime thinking about it or preparing for it. So, Father, I just pray that your Holy Spirit will pour out into the land of Canada and touch each and every heart with the truth of your kingdom and your glory. That people will be prepared to receive that truth and that glory and to turn from their wicked ways as all of us need to do and uh, accept the free gift of, of eternal life through Jesus Christ. So Father, you can turn bad things into good. You always use the things that are not to confound the things that are. And so we look to you, Father, in this time of crisis to uh, just bring about a great awakening in our land and revival in our church. So we thank you, Father, for this day and ask you to bless the rest of our time together. In Jesus' name, amen.